My name's Russ Cook and I'm attempting to become the first person ever to run the entire length of Africa. This is where I started, this is where I'm heading and this is where I am now. I've run 8,545 kilometres so far and I've got 8,054 left to go. So far on the mission. I've survived alone in the desert, pissed blood, been robbed at gunpoint, thought I was going to be killed in the jungle, had my support van smashed to bits and raised 97,000 quid for charity. In this episode, I tackle my ongoing back injury, Stan and Gus find massive snails, James tests his skills on rocky terrain, and I treat the boys to a night of pure luxury. So today's the day, back in business. Are you optimistic? Worried. Not much really feels like it's changed, but the drugs might work. How frequently is it still spasming? It's not even like spasming that frequently. It's just, I know it's not right, but like, it's definitely not right. How many perfect heads have you been drinking a day during your recovery period? Say the big important days start running. Mm. When you need the energy. Yeah. What exactly have you had this morning? You've rubbed on the muscle relaxant. I've taken the proxin. And I'm going to rub on the muscle relaxer before I let you get back in. I think I'm just going to do one stop. I don't think two stops is a good idea. I think well, one yeah. longer stop is better than two small stops. The amount of time I think will just seize up on a stop. Mm, true. Everything's going to be all right. No, I don't buy it. <laughs> After two rest days and receiving some mildly positive news yesterday regarding my reoccurring back spasms, it was go time. Perfect head inside my midsection, rode in my pupil reflection. What's not to love? Meanwhile, as I was out there, a wild Stan and Gus were starting their day off inhaling a breakfast for champions. What do we have here, people? I got some really oily spaghetti with mm. some other things mixed into it, some beans, some yellowish stuff, I don't know. <laughs> have you ever thought about writing menus for these places? <laughs> they mixed up with a lot of oil to make it slide straight in. Then mm. I asked for some additional beans, and with the beans, he put some extra sauce on top. Uh, the sauce consists out mostly Grind up pepper, a lot of salt, some oil, mm. maybe some tomato puree. Maybe a bit of oil as well, I don't know. Yeah. Maybe. Probably some oil. And some oil, yeah. Some oil. Delicious. So you've travelled Africa a long time. What's your favourite local dish that you've tried? And by local, I mean something that you find in in one of the more poor areas. Like for a nutritional standpoint, like something that I can eat three times a day, but most travellers actually will hate about, mm. about the country is uh, full uh, from Sudan. It's more an Arabic dish, I think. Mm. It's available everywhere. It's dirty cheap. I would have it three, four, five times a day. It would be find, found everywhere. So that one I like really a lot from a nutritional standpoint, being an athlete in Africa at the time. So what happened? But I just felt f like the amount of mental power that took just to get 30k done. So what is it? Is it still just your back? Same back, problem. Legs, legs. Everything's inflamed. I feel like I'm going f insane. What's been going through your head? Uh, uh, mate, even the, taking all those like taking all that doesn't really help. To be honest. You're just feeling quite out of it, or yeah, it's just space. 31 k's and a little sulk in the bag. I needed some alone time to recharge before going back out there. Another 29 k was left to conquer and I knew I'd have to dig deep if it to be done. Whilst I was smashing the open road, Stan and Gus found some big f of snails. Do you eat them? Yes. yes. How do you prepare them? You break it. You break them? Then you wash it very well. But yeah, it's called uh, alum. That's what we used to wash it. Uh, you wash the alum? Yes. And then you have to boil it? Yes. So you put salt or...? Uh, salt, uh, you season it. After mm -hmm. that, you can cook it and fry it. You eat it together with rice? It's very good. It's very rich. Where do you find them? In the bush. They live in the bush here? Yeah? Yes. That one is not even there big? Are bigger ones, yes. How much do they cost? Oh, like this is 10,000. 10,000 Naira for how many is this? Maybe 23. 10? 23. 23 and only 10 Naira. It's cheap. Oh, the f***s. Oh. 
How are you doing? Need some fing naproxen. Probably not gonna get better anytime soon, so I might as well just suck it up. Oh. How does it feel though to do another 60k? Is that at least my hope, right? Yeah. At least we get the numbers in today. That is actually my hope, to be fair. Is that a bit of a slug, that? Oh, terrible scenes. One of the worst ones. Really? I'm so glad it's over. That cream helps. But it, it does wear off, that's in trouble. But I don't know what's happening down there, to be fair, but I, it's not. It's definitely not ideal. Okay. Oh, well, well, let's get back to camp and uh, yeah, mate. we'll, we'll reassess. Fine. All right, mate. A heavy day on road had left me mentally and physically exhausted. Luckily for me, though, Stan and Jamie had met some friendly locals who showed us love by offering a safe place to stay. You're welcome to my community. Thank you very much, sir. Why is your family? And you know, you people are white, we are black. But it's just the same blood that flows in our vein. You understand? It's the same blood. That's how Almighty God created everybody. People now is white, we are black, but we live in one. Absolutely. So that's it. You see, my people, they are looking at you people. Oh, nice. So that's it. Yeah, so you people are cool. But so are you. You've Thank invited you. us into Thank your you. home. Thank you. You know? Dr. Kirk, a wise philosopher once said, lick my neck, my back, my <laughs> in my crack. <laughs> How is your neck, back, in crack this morning? Still there. It's always a good start. I've been really disciplined with the stretch. I've seen you've been doing a lot of massage gun as well. Yeah. So did you lose a bit of consistency with that previously? Oh uh, yeah, I basically didn't really do much recovery for the first 200 days. Did a bit, especially I, I did decent like warm-ups, but never after really. I just, normally it'd just be so f***ed to just flop into the mountain like, <laughs> when's it time to eat and when's it time to sleep and that's really yeah work stuff eat like, you know. sleep stomp repeat yeah. i think you need a bit of something like this to remind you how important recovery is yeah see the if results you can get away with not doing it yeah like, it's the first bait it's always for me anyway i don't know about other people with running stuff but it's always the first thing to go like if i get tired now i'm like or if i just get lazy it's crazy how someone as disciplined as yourself can get in a little recovery rut Oh mate, I mean, I'm disciplined in some ways. I'm really not disciplined. That's why I love chocolate and sweets. So <laughs> I have to set boundaries around the things I have to be disciplined around. So I stick to them, but then everything else goes out the window. You said yesterday that you hated every single second of it. Yeah. You feeling so a little nice bit more today. optimistic today? Well, today is a new day, so you never know what could happen, mate. You like, seem a little bit more cheering. Just accepting my fate, but I've had a nice little chill out last night. Had a good sleep, had some fuel which was lovely. What show did you have last night? Oh, banana. Oh. I do, I do enjoy the carb banana. Yeah, I must admit that's probably one of my favourites. I think it might be my favourite actually. It started off with the Cajun pasta. I really enjoyed that, but I think maybe the carb banana. Feeling motivated by the thought of a huge carbonara waiting for my arrival at stop one, I left with the intention of having a much better day in the office. I was sick of tarmac yesterday, but today I was going to make it beg for more mercy than Duffy. Chin down, hands up. How are we doing, guys? How's the first twenty? Right, I actually felt not like like a bit of an improvement. Oh wow! Yeah. Out of all of this food we've got on the side here, pre-prepped, he's gone. Yeah, cheers for that. But cheers, uh, mouth. And think about coca pots for the last two hours. Oh, what the? F <laughs> 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 Had some feta cheese on your coco pot. Oh, bro, it's a bit full. Let's just give it. <laughs> I feel like 20% better than yesterday. Maybe a couple of days off did help. I guess the problem is, is like if I start doing the mileage again, then it might just f it again. But like, hopefully, it sorts itself out. So, is your mileage strategy in the short term? I appreciate you're probably going to be listening to your body, but is it just like 60Ks? Stick to that. The problems really started to arise when you upped your mileage to 70. That is quite a monk-like posture. Relaxation, bruv. I mean, I'm not cooking on gas yet. But... What were you cooking on yesterday? Just hopes and dreams, mate. And now today we've got hopes, dreams, and perfect ten. I could have. But... So are you quite happy to do another 20 today? Another 20 out, I think. Gobble, gobble. Oh, see you in a bit, lad. See you in a bit.
I've been chipping away all day long. Now I just had to finish what I started. Proceedings were tough, but I started to grow in optimism throughout today's stomping. The Nigerian border was fast approaching and I was beginning to catch my first sniffs of Benin's aroma as it wafted down into my septum. How you doing, mate? Yeah, all right. Tough? It's tough, but, mate, I feel way more optimistic today than I did yesterday. I was thinking yesterday, I was like, oh, I am f***ing here. Just seeing it ease off just a little bit, it's just like, oh. I was just thinking, like, it's possible that I can actually overcome the injury instead of just having to fucking suck it up. Mate, I mean, I don't want to count my chickens yet, but, like, the fact that it's eased off after a 60k day is a f***ing good sign in my books. Yeah, unreal, unreal. Feeling slightly more optimistic that I could overcome this injury was working wonders for our mental sanity. Another 60k in the bread bin and achieving it without experiencing as much discomfort as recent efforts. We made our way to a hotel with the idea of getting in another eight hours of dozing before doing it all again. So, looks a little bit suggestive. It's, it's all right, I've, zo I've zoomed in on your face, oh, nice. so you don't have to nice. worry. So you ended last night in a pretty optimistic state. Yeah. How's that lasted overnight? Kind of. I do st I, I still... I still feel a bit stiff, but... Mate, as long as we see improvements, then I'll be happy. My back definitely still is not okay, but... As long as it's manageable. Manageable was all I could ask for, and I was willing to call the shots like a prime Mourinho. 4-4-2. Four, four, Let's have it. I went back out for another day versus the Nigerian gravel group to inflict even greater agony on them. James is a big t James was backing up everything and then deleted absolutely everything. 13 days of footage. Oh, James, you silly boy. We're on the amend, I hope. Is that right, Stan? Yet to be seen, James. Yet to be seen. This might be the next YouTube video that comes out. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just scapegoat someone. Yeah. I think it was actually Jared's fault. Yeah. <laughs> I tell you what, though, is that? it was Jared who set up the system to make sure that nothing can go wrong. Well, um, go. And he didn't write anywhere in big letters, don't format the drive, you stupid c yeah. <laughs> And if he, if, he, if, he, if he had. So when you get back and you get in a gym, what's the first thing you're going to do? It'll probably take me about two weeks to get back into it, actually. I'll probably give everything a little tickle. Oh, man, it's a bench press, though, do you know what I mean? Like, oh. I don't know what, what my, like, my one rep matches are. When I've been in like peak strength, I can do like 80 kg for 16 reps. But I think my strength kind of like peters off quite quickly. So I could do 18 for like 16 reps, and then you chuck 90 on there, and now I'm like nose Oh uh, yeah. Think, and then like. So you've probably got good conditioning, but not like. I'm not strong. Strength. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Bye bye. That was a bit. Dreaming of iron bouncing off my pathetic pigeon chest, I had to <laughs> I had to snap out of it as there was still work to be done here. I hit the West African lanes for the final time today and I managed to waft down another 60 big ones before dark. With Stan and Jamie on the threes and fours at last night's hotel, me, James and Gus had to all cram in the four by four. It was so dark when we arrived last night that we didn't notice anything special about where we decided to camp. However, the following morning we realised that we had actually pitched up on a rubber plantation. We met two welcoming gentlemen who kindly showed us their rubber making process. Around the July, August, the seed will be cracking. Then you will first pick the seed. A rubber tree seed. Uh, the rubber tree seed. Eight days it will shoot out. Only eight days, that's very fast. Yes, it will shoot out. Every three meter, you plant it on three meter. That's where they will go straight up. Yes. So wow. all this white stuff will be processed and actually yes. something black. You will use this product for many, many things. Like cup, all those plastic chair, tires, all these rubbers. How big is, what is the size of this plant? The size, like this, this place now is 100 hectares. 100 hectares? Yes. One kilo is one dollar? Yes, one kilo is one dollar. One day, this, this thing will full. One day this will be one dollar worth of rubber? Yes. And that's times how many trees? The trees, you, you can't even count the trees. <laughs> so there is money on this. That's why you see all those companies, they are investing on this. So you live on property of the company? Yes. Does your family also live on the property? Oh, yes. 
So the, the company they give provides you, you a house for yes, your whole family? They, they, yes, they give you accommodation for free. Uh -huh. Do they give education for your children? Yes, if you have five child, they care for five child. Do you have uh, access to healthcare? Yes, yes, we have healthcare. Yes, there is doctor there. Mm -hmm. there is doctor. If the case is worse, they can transfer you to UBTH in Benin to go and treat that person. Benin City? Yes, the company will pay for it. How many people work for this company? I can't really say. There, there are more than thousands. Mm. Thousands? Yes, because this company is not in one place. So they have they built a whole town for more than 1,000 people? Yes. When we drive through the bush, everything is flying around in the back. I'm bouncing around the back. Bottles are flying out of the door. But one thing that doesn't fly around is soap. No. <laughs> outside on the edge. No. Surely not. There's no way. Yes. What? <laughs> so the legs are just defined f for me. It's just like, you know how some, like you stop running and then you go for, to sleep and then you look at like, your muscles normally like recover. Mine just feels like I just finished running 60K, like literally five minutes ago. Now I'm gonna go and do it again. Sake. Okay, so. Right. Unsurprisingly, three man crammed into the back of a 4x4 like sardines wasn't a brilliant recipe for sleep or recovery. Anyhow, I had to quit complaining if anything sizable was to be achieved today, so I slid into the Tarmac's DMs again to drop some serious game. However, James and Gus decided to shake off their muscle tiredness a little differently. How many decades have you been uh, rock climbing? Uh... <laughs> I've never rock climbed in my life. You already look better than standoffs. All the boys are getting involved. Brave choice, brave choice. <laughs> and the absolute winner is... Feliz! Feliz! <laughs> <laughs> Admittedly, you weren't feeling it this morning. Why don't we switch that and say what is fantastic in Russ Cook's let's, life right now? Let's do that. We out here traveling parts of Africa that f no one ever travels. Hey, I've dreamt about doing this mission for years and now I'm here. Fucking happy days, really, do you know what I mean? When we were having a beer with someone's village, they gifted us a beer. You said to me that sometimes you just like can't actually believe you're here. Yeah, rural village with like no electricity, everyone just sat there. I got, I'm like, I've had one beer and I'm basically half cut. I'm like, it's actually meant. What do you love about your job here, Gus? Bro, uh, everything. I'm able to do sports almost every day. I go for swims in tropical rivers. We had like a rock climbing session just before. We got to speak to amazing people. Everybody is so friendly. One of the things I love maybe most about Africa is the freedom. Even though there's a lot, a lot of rules that restrict freedom here, nobody really cares about the rules. So you can just do whatever like this. Almost like in car traffic, there's almost all the rules that you have back home as well in Europe. Some people here drive without a windscreen, you know, it's okay. A car that officially only is allowed to fit five people, fit 30, 40, 50 people here. It's okay. I don't say this is the, the perfect environment for everybody, I think Europe is a nice baseline for a lot of young families, especially children, to give them an equal chance to become whatever they want. And I think that's awesome. But for me personally, in the stage I'm in now in my life, I prefer Africa. You've said to me before, Gus, and we're having a little chat off camera, that with you traveling Africa by yourself on your bike and, you know, dealing with that being lonely, etc., when you get back home, you feel like you almost lost a bit of a connection with people back home. As well, of course, people cannot understand my world. They cannot understand the things I do daily. They cannot understand the motivations, but also like my ways of thinking, of, of seeing certain things. It's very far apart of their perspective. And it's logical because they have been living through something totally different in their life than I've been doing the last few years. I'm still a foreigner and stranger in this country, but I'm also a foreigner, like, a bit of a stranger in my own country. They, they often maybe will find like some perspectives of me, like even stupid or like unresponsible. But I think if they would have lived to what I've been living through here the last few years, then they would probably understand a bit better. 
After a few hard days of labour, I decided to treat the team to a rare night of luxury. Everyone was doing their bit to ensure that we were functioning as efficiently as possible, therefore it was times 10 burgers and fries. We all deserve this. In the next episode, we enter Lagos, Jamie gets back on a boat and we attempt to fix Nelly's windscreen. <laughs>